heart is bullshit blazing Still my heart is blazing If the words kill me I don't need a new world Another universe Soon you will know We already know the smell of the In case you weren't aware, during Radcon 3, I did a massive three-hour breakdown of the basic lore of Guilty Gear in a display of full-on concentrated autism as of yet unheard of, breaking down the basic plot progression of over 300 in-game years of history leading up to the conditions that caused the story of the first game, all the way up to, at the time, newest entry in the series, Guilty Gear XR'd Rev 2. However, since then, Arxis has announced a new entry in the series, so far merely titled Guilty Gear 2020, and it looks, frankly, fucking incredible. Taking the series now signature art style to even further heights, blurring the line between 2D and 3D all the more. They're suddenly adjusting the shape of the character's eyes in each frame to simulate the imperfections of 2D artwork! Fucking nuts! That being said, this video will be mostly ignoring the visuals and gameplay changes that the latest 90 minute reveal trailer broke down because, to be honest, the visual improvements are obvious and I'm too much of a scrub to really comment with any authority on the implications of the proposed gameplay tweaks. I'm in this shit for the DEEP LORE MY DUDES! And so, while barely anything has really been revealed about the narrative 2020 will present, there are some nuggets of information we can glean from what's been revealed so far, as well as some inferences that I'm making based on that info. So if you sat through the entirety of my Guilty Gear lecture and are thirsty for more info on what the Gear Lads might be up to next, sit back, relax, and enjoy the insanity that can only come from the mind of our boy and our god, Daisuke himself. Starting right at the beginning of the initial reveal teaser, we get a look at a desert area that appears similar to the Boston Seabed, a location in Exard, but barren featureless deserts are a staple of any shonen anime that needs a fight to take place without collateral damage, so this really could be anywhere. Scattered throughout this area are massive skeletons that are impaled with similarly massive, ornately designed swords. These are almost certainly the remains of large, possibly Megadeth-class gears that were slain or sealed during the Crusades, which does further lend credit to this possibly being the Boston Seabed, or at least a location in America, since the gear outbreak started in the States. We then pan through the area, following an eagle to a familiar pair of cross swords, and our main boys, Sol and Kai, are once again doing what they do best, looking better than ever. Now, some people have speculated, or at least were initially, that 2020 might be a reboot of Guilty Gear due to its unnamed nature, as well as it being rumored at the time, and since confirmed, to be altered mechanically to streamline gameplay. And while we all know a fresh start to the story might have been for the better at this point, this shot itself here mostly disproves that theory, as Soul's sword in the screenshot is Junkyard Dog, his sword he builds later on in the series, rather than the Fire Seal, the piece of the outrage that he wielded in the beginning of the series ever since Guilty Gear 1. Now, of course, this could just just be a retcon for aesthetic reasons since Junkyard Dog is a lot more ornate of a design than Fire Seal and shows off the abilities of Arxis's new engine a lot better, but other bits of info as well as Daisuke himself has since confirmed 2020 to take place after the events of Exard. The convolution lives on! After this, we get a teaser nearly identical to the original Exard reveal in structure. Sol and Kai pulling off some of their signature moves interspersed with some more cinematic camera angles from their victory and overdrive attack animations to really sell the visual prowess of this new engine. While there isn't a ton left to chew on in this particular clip, aside from foaming at the mouth over the insane visuals, there are some key takeaways. The most obvious is the addition of stage transitions now. With enough damage against the wall, it can break and knock the opponent flying DBZ style to another location in the level. But more subtle are the introductions of new attacks for both Sol and Kai. Sol performs this mid-air diving punch, and Kai does a flip kick that seems to function as a replacement for his greed sever, having a similar forward-reaching arc, though Sol counters it here so we don't see how it resolves. Exard, for the most part, was a frame-for-frame -frame direct translation of the 2D Guilty Gear animations, with the cast retaining nearly all of their movesets and animations for those moves, with very little changes or additions. 2020 seems to be much more comfortable switching things up here and changing familiar movesets, most likely in the name of the aforementioned streamlining. Though, I am curious if this gameplay shift will also be represented narratively. So far, each character that has been revealed have also taken an aesthetic jump coming from Exard, and I can't help but think the design changes could represent a shift in perspective post the events of Rev 2, where essentially the leader of the free world was revealed to be a sham that had been secretly plotting for the downfall of humanity for years. Kai in particular in this trailer has a striking redesign. His outfit has always been mostly pure 
bright whites and strong blues, the color of the Sacred Order of Holy Knights, representing his chaste, honest sense of justice, and contrasting with the dirty tans and dark reds of Soul's design, representing his ethical ambiguity and carefree nature. Though, throughout the series, Kai's worldviews have been consistently tested. The black and white conflict of the Crusades in which he was born and raised, yielding to a more nuanced society during peacetime. While starting off the series almost comedically chivalrous, his prejudices and assumptions have evolved throughout his love and marriage to Dizzy, as well as being constantly used or manipulated by his superiors, from the post-war administration bureau in Double X to most recently the Universal Will during Rev 2. We even saw in XR that somehow Kai is now part gear himself, an unthinkable notion to the Kai from the beginning of the series. The pulling out of the bulk of the whites from his outfit, leaving only a small unbuttoned jacket compared to the flowing trench coat from previous entries, replaced with a black shirt and pants, and the lack of his trademark belt buckle engraved with the word hope, could suggest a shift in beliefs now firmly tainted by his recent experiences, the naivete of his youth lost in a sea of political intrigue and back-to-back -back betrayals. In fact, identity could be a core theme throughout all of 2020, which would be an interesting narrative approach to take in concert with the game itself evolving its identity through gameplay adjustment for the first time in over a decade. The backing track to this teaser, Smell of the Game, assumedly talking about Soul considering all the fire references, is all about questioning identity. If you take the time and try and parse out the barely decipherable Ingress that has come to characterize Daisuke's work on the Guilty Gear series now. The lyrics talk about being told who you are versus trying to come to terms with who you are on your own, with an entire section of the full song having the vocalist merely asking, what am I? And really, who is in more of a position to question their identity at this point than our boy Soul? For hundreds of years now, he's been motivated solely by his desire for vengeance against that man, for creating the gears and turning Arya into a monster. But in Rev 2, not only does Soul get Arya back by fusing Jacko with justice, but it's revealed that Asuka was battling for Soul the entire time in this crazy multi-century Machiavellian scheme to reunite his two best buds. So everything Soul has believed and has stewed on for centuries was a complete farce. He isn't the guilty gear anymore. So what does he do now with an eternal life with no goal? The pathos, my dudes! Or maybe Daisuke just thought some black pants look fucking cool, I don't know. Anyways, that's about what I got out of the initial reveal trailer, but we do still have some other characters we can take a look at. Our next character reveal was a peek at a much older looking Mei, first revealed in the end of the TGS trailer and in full in the CEO Taku trailer. A lot of people have been looking to Mei's new design appearing to be much older and assuming 2020 takes place a fair bit of time after Exard. However, I have to wonder how much of that appearance of aging is more due to a shift in art direction. Exard was pretty cartoonish in its aesthetic, playing with proportions and simplifying faces and stuff, most likely to play nice with the limited headroom of Unreal Engine 3 and getting the game to run smoothly on the PS3, which did get a release of Vanilla Xard. Now though, moving to Unreal Engine 4 and having better spec hardware, the engine can support a grittier, more detailed art style, falling somewhere in between the cartoonish aesthetic of Xard and the much darker look of the character art from the original X and Double X. Plus, you know, May is canon 22 years old as of Exard, so moving on! Axel's reveal was probably the most interesting out of everyone's, simply because his stage intro shows him walking through a portal, which means Axel not only still has his time travel powers, despite being told that using them to save Soul at the end of Rev 2 means he could no longer travel again, at least not back to 1998 where he came from to be with Megumi, but now he has total control over this ability, able to teleport in at will, something that has plagued him for the entire series as he's been ripped from time to time and place to place throughout his story without his consent, either being used by more powerful figures in the story or seemingly at random. His mastery over this ability not only opens up new potential for his moveset in game, but also makes you wonder what happened to him that changed his relationship to this power so drastically. More recently, we got a look at Chip and Potemkin in the latest gameplay demo, and I probably have the least to say about them simply because they aren't as involved in the main story as Sol and Kai, so there's less to infer about. I will say that Chip's moveset seems to have evolved immensely since Exard, adding lots more DBZ-esque teleporting and rapid strikes, and summoning and cloning jutsus pulled straight out of Naruto. Despite his goofball nature, Chip is the leader of an entire country, so this maturation and leaning to more typical shinobi-style skills could represent him maturing as a result of his leadership role. Chip is no longer a recovering drug addict playing at Ninja with delusions of grandeur, filling in the gaps with empty bravado, but now a responsible adult who has finally grown into his new role as leader. 
Potemkin's design similarly has evolved in a way that hints at both implications of his character as well as his home nation of Zep. While his appearance on the surface looks nearly identical to his outfit in Exard, close-ups of his face during his stage intro show that under his helmet is tons of additional technology such as futuristic looking goggles and masks. Whether this is a mask of some kind or possibly even implants is unknown, but combined with the chest implants that expand and contract during his moves as well as his beefed up gauntlets with even more firepower, not to mention a goddamn jet Pack shows that Zep is now seemingly moving forward even more with technological progression now that the threat of the universal will has been eliminated, and Potemkin seems to be even more loyal to his savior Gabriel than ever before, allowing his own body to be modified with more invasive implants in order to better serve his master. And uh, that's what I got for uh, info going into Guilty Gear 2020. You can bet as soon as a proper game drops, I'll be dissecting it and doing my best to add the events of this game to the overall timeline. So feel free to subscribe if you want to put yourself through that mindfuck later next year. In the meantime, I'll be continuing to try and upload here on IM Games rather frequently. Things have been going slow for the bulk of this year due to a spinal injury, for which I finally got surgery for two weeks ago. So I'm on the mend there, minus a little bit of my spine, they've pulled it out. But that means more content! Speaking of content, if you're a fan of action games, and you're watching a lore dump on Guilty Gear, so of course you are, I'm making a Sega Mega Drive inspired action game of my own starring an adorable raccoon ninja named Izumi. You can play the vertical slice I released earlier this year over on Newgrounds, link in the description, and a proper full featured demo will be coming soon with tons of gameplay tweaks and expanded mechanics. So feel free to follow me over on Twitter to stay up to date with developments about that. If you like listening to me ramble on about video games and would like to hear me do so about other things as well, I run two exclusive podcasts over on my Patreon. A dollar a month gets you access to the bonus rants, where I record my thoughts about whatever semi-contentious thing that crosses my mind, and for five dollars a month you get access to the weekly bonus podcast, where I take suggestions from you and go in-depth on them for around 15 to 20 minutes or so. There are already 23 episodes, with a new one dropping every Sunday evening. Link to my Patreon is in the description if that sounds like something you'd be into. That's all I got for now. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it so I can bump up my P score and remember to always be the games you want to see. I am Games, signing out.